So firstly, I've got to start with you, Jackson. What was it like when you first tried on the cape and the mask? Well, um, we actually had many, many <laughs> variants of the cape and the mask, um, but by the time I put on the final version, it, it was definitely, you know, especially when we were filming actual scenes where I was wearing it, it's definitely empowering. Um, it, it, it was very, there was a very clear distinction between when I had the mask off and I was playing Brandon, the conflicted, emotionally confused, um, and somewhat evil, psychopathic person, and then when I had on the mask and I was just a cold, dead killer. Um, and uh, that was very a fun line to explore the, uh, you know, the, the, the difference between the two uh, people within one character. How is Brightburn and you take on the superhero genre? Well, I think that, you know, this is really a mashup between the superhero genre and the horror genre. We put them together. It's not 50% of each. It's 100% of both of them. And uh, I love examining superhero myths and seeing the different ways, taking them apart, putting them back together, seeing the different ways in, in which you can come at them. And I think this is an incredibly uh, simple and elegant way of, of, of coming at this idea of what if our superhero that was supposed to be a superhero, was born to be a superhero, was born to save us, actually ended up being the worst person on the planet. <laughs> so this movie wouldn't have worked without the right actor for Brandon because yes. it's such a challenging role. Is it true that Jackson was the first to audition? Yes, it was. Yeah, we got 200 tapes and um, his was the first that we saw. And he uh, blew us all away. Um, I could not uh, believe what I was seeing because I was expecting it to be really difficult. And 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 it's you're exactly right. Like he did such an incredible job. I think he has a huge future ahead of him. I'm excited for him. Mm. And what was your reaction when you first saw it? It's so iconic. Like it's, I was like, it's, it's creepy beyond. You know, it's it, it's, I don't know, like like Leatherface or like, you know. Like Freddy Krueger, not Freddy Krueger. Um, what's the other one? Friday, uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Jason. Like, it, there's all these the iconic masks where you see the eyes behind, and and that was to me what it was. I, it, like, it's so, it's really disturbing seeing that on a little kid. Now, even though the movie is a horror take on the superhero genre, mm -hmm. in what ways is the movie also about parenting? It's a superhero horror movie that like. You take these two genres and it's creating a new genre, really. He's um, kind of, a super villain, really, if anything, not a hero. But, but beneath that, it's also a psychological thriller of these parents that are trying to figure out, is this kid really changing um, or am I imagining this? And the conflict between the two of them of one wanting to only see the good, innocent little baby that they found and the other that's more skeptical and how they kind of turn on each other throughout the course of the film. And by the time they put two and two together, uh, it's, you know, too little too late. Mm. Now, the cape and the mask are very simplistic for a superhero costume, yet terrifying. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth, what was your reaction when you first saw the cape and mask? Okay, you don't even understand <laughs> what my first visual was, which was a test of, like, 50 masks, yeah. right? So they dyed them all different colors red because they weren't, you know, we were figuring out like how deep of a red, was it bright, was it darker? So I walked into a room one day where there was maybe 50 masks hanging all with the eyes like cut out, like looking at me yeah. in this like costume fitting. And it was so freaky. And I'll be honest, I knew then we had a hit movie because I was like the iconography of this mask it was it was apparent just then with the you know with the string and yeah. the whole thing like we were we all different ways of tying it and everything and I thought people are gonna go nuts that, for this that idea. That was the big that was the big. Change. It was like a breakthrough. Autumn Steed, who's a really talented uh, costume designer, she she designed a bunch of masks and I kept saying it isn't quite there because yeah. it looks a little bit too much. Like sometimes it looked like Spider Man, sometimes it looked like something like a Ku Klux Klan mask or something. It was like not looking right. Yeah. And I, then one time she did one with the tie, but the tie was on the back of the head. And I said, what if you moved that to the face? Yeah. 
which she did, and that was it. Then I'm like, okay, now we've got Leatherface. Now totally. we've got Freddy Krueger. Totally. Now we've got Jason. Yeah. Um, it's just our own super heroic version of that. Yeah, I think we may see a few at Halloween. I think so. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> we saw one today already. I've seen some cosplayers. <laughs> I've seen a few cosplayers already online. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was scared so much that I saw a kid on the um, escalator afterwards that similar had a similar look, and he was looking at me, and I was like, please don't look at me. I just <laughs> oh, saw Brightburn. <laughs> that makes me so happy. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I guess there's just something about, I mean, obviously for what my job is, but I love scaring people. So hearing that you were frightened uh, makes me very happy. Can you talk about the process of designing the cape and mask? Because I read that over 120 masks and capes were designed before you got to the correct version. Yeah, that is that is uh, that is probably <laughs> very accurate. Um, um, my wife um, is a is a costume designer. She was worked with me for 10 years or so. She's an incredible costume designer. I was very lucky to have her. And um, and we start talking very early on that about like how how, how can we des design the definitive horror superhero character? You know, you know, I I wanted to make something like. Gr growing up, I grew up with like Freddy and Jason and Michael Myers and Leatherface and all these guys, and I wanted to make something that iconic and that recognizable. And so, and so, you know, not an easy ask, uh, but but that was the goal. And uh, she went to work just grinding out, and and the evolution of this thing. There's this photo of her that's amazing, where it's just her, and there's a wall of different masks and different capes. Oh, wow. Well, she did a great job she because great I job. never knew a blankie could be that scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and like, you know, I, th I think there's something to just a boy in his blanket and turning that into such a nightmarish image. There's something kind of cool about it. I'm really proud of her. I just came back from Mexico City where posters like that are all over the place and billboards and stuff. And I, I keep seeing photos from around the world in Thailand and all these places. And, and like, to see her work on the global scale like that, I am so unbelievably proud of her. And Jackson, a lot of kids watch superhero movies and, you know, fantasize about having superpowers, but you kind of got a taste of what it would be like to have a superpower. So what was your favorite onset experience from shooting Brightburn? Well, um, honestly, you would, you would think the most fun times would be the most fast-paced, action-packed, Scenes and you know while those are fun, you know being strung up in a harness and, and flying and you know convulsing etc. I think the the most fond memories I have of, of shooting the movie were the times when we couldn't stop laughing. You know the, there's one scene where I'm trying to eat cereal and James Gunn was it was telling me uh, that I that I had to eat it while looking straight down uh, and talking uh, and it didn't work out at all and I was dropping cereal and milk out of my mouth the whole time and it's just it's moments like that where we just can't stop laughing and it's absolutely hilarious and those are those are the times that I remember the most. Uh, James you're known for your special use of music especially in the Guardians of Galaxy franchise mm -hmm. so how important is the music score for a movie and how did you go about the creation or creating of the score for this horrific and very tense Brightburn? Well, the, Tim, our composer, is a really talented guy. I've worked with him a lot on, he um, does a lot of the orchestrations for the Guardians movies and works with Tyler Bates, who's my composer. Um, and so I think it, you know, in a horror movie, music is, music and sound are everything. You finish the picture and you're really only halfway there because you've got to add that sound, you've got to add that music, and it just changes oh, everything. It makes the movie, really. It really does. Yeah. And the movie is so well served by by what Tim and, and Dave did with the score and then also by the, the, the sound. Mm -hmm. uh, the sound is really fantastic. I find there is nothing scarier than being watched by someone and not knowing that not being aware of it yeah. so there's one moment where brandon is floating outside the window and it is quite disturbing where did that idea come from i am so happy to hear you say that because that moment is was the first image i had in my mind while reading the script and it wasn't in the script but it, it was it was this thing kept popping into my mind i was imagining what it would look like if john carpenter shot a superhero like he shot michael myers and that was the thought in my mind. I started imagining him through the window, like watching in, in this like long shot like that. And so, and so, um, 
that was the first idea I had that kind of started to grow into this vision of the movie. And so uh, it's very exciting to hear you uh, pick out that moment because that moment was so important to me. We actually named the, the costume Smeva and a uh, single most important visual aspect because um, it was so integral to, I wanted you to look at that image specifically and, and think, holy crap, that's a superhero, but uh, something's wrong with it, I don't like it. Um, and, and, and so I wanted you in that one image to see the superhero and the horror in the mashup and understand it. it certainly and, worked. Well, yeah, thank, thank you. you so much for talking to Hey oh. You Guys, it's been a pleasure. Oh, thank you so thank much. You. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.